If you were locked inside an abandoned skyscraper and no one was coming to help, what would you do? I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the apartment in Trapped. This man is about to make the biggest mistake of his life. Shoria here is a call center agent and has a massive crush on his co-worker, Nuri. That night they're talking over dinner and having a wonderful evening, but suddenly she reveals her family has arranged for her to marry someone. Shoria decides he wants to be with her anyways, and two months later they're still together. Wanting to take it further, he begs her to marry him instead, but she finds his proposal ridiculous. Her arranged marriage happens in two days, but he makes her promise that if he finds them a bigger apartment before the wedding, then they can stay together. The man is desperate, but this guy's intelligence is going to reach 200 IQ just to keep the girl he loves, and he has no idea that it's going to backfire on him hard. The next morning, he begins making calls and asks what apartments are available, but he's turned down and told that even the cheapest places are out of his price range. There's no way he'll find a new home in time, but that's when this stranger approaches, telling him he has a place that's within his budget. He drives them over to the skyscraper, but as they walk inside, the man notices there's no one here. Leading the boyfriend to a room, he shows him the interior of the apartment. It has everything a married couple would need, and he takes the keys, agreeing to sign the lease. He's excited to show his girlfriend their brand new home, but this place will soon turn into a death trap. The next morning, he wakes up to find that his phone is dead and plugs the charger back into the outlet. He freshens up and gets ready for the day, but as he's waiting for the elevator, his phone starts ringing. Shoryo realizes he left it back inside and unlocks the door as fast as he can. Rushing into his room, he answers the call and it's his girlfriend. She's been waiting at the train station for him to decide whether or not to get married. But there's a problem. A gust of wind blows the door closed with the keys on the other side, and there's no way to leave without them. Shoria tries his hardest to open the door, but no matter how much he messes with the knob, the door remains shut. Nobody knows he's here, and he's completely trapped inside. Okay, this man is screwed. He wanted to make this apartment a surprise for his girlfriend, and now it's been turned into a death trap. If you look at this building from the outside, you can tell that the place is virtually abandoned, and if there's nobody around to hear him screaming for help, it could literally take a full month before anyone shows up to check on him. And judging by the amount of water left in this bottle, he only has about five days to live. Now, if I'm being honest, keeping this apartment a surprise was the dumbest thing he could do. Earlier, his girlfriend told him that if they don't find a place to live in two days, then she's going to marry someone else. That's a pretty serious threat, which is why if it were me, I would have called her the moment I was handed the keys of this place, telling her that it's all taken care of and that we can get married. This man is his own greatest enemy, but luckily he has a chance to fix this and all he needs to do is make one right decision. When he first arrived, the agent told him that the breaker tripped and he needed to turn it back on. This is extremely important information because circuit breakers only trip when too much electricity flows through it. And since he's the only person living here, it means the circuitry in this place overloads way too easily. To make matters worse, the breaker is outside in the hallway, so if he trips it, he'll lose his electricity for good. Right now, this phone is the only tool we have to get out of here alive, so whatever we do, we need to make sure we can charge it. With this in mind, the smartest decision is to unplug all devices so there's no chance of switching off the breaker and charge your phone with as little risk as possible. That could go a long way in helping us get out of here safely, because in a potential death trap scenario, your earliest decisions are often the most critical. Slowing down to think ahead is going to give you the best chance of survival, and if you react out of fear, then you're setting yourself up for failure. Shoria searches the rooms for something that might break the lock, and tries using a pair of tongs, but it doesn't work. Thinking quickly, the boyfriend contacts a locksmith, explaining that he needs help as soon as possible. He's about to tell him where the building is, but the call suddenly cuts out. Realizing the battery is dead, he runs to plug in the charger, but that's when he notices the air conditioning unit has shut itself off too. There's no electricity in his apartment, and now he has no way to call for help. Panicking, he runs for the door and sees that there's nobody around. He starts hitting the lock out of desperation, but accidentally cuts his hand. His options are running out, and the man rushes out onto the balcony to shout at the security guard, but he's too high up. No one hears him, and no one is coming to help. Calming down, he goes to the bathroom to bandage his wound, but the man knows if he doesn't get out of here, he'll starve to death. 
he goes back out into the balcony and calls out to the people in the nearby buildings, but they can't hear him. With nothing to lose, Shadia tries to recharge his phone battery by rubbing it on his pants and plugs it into his phone, but it doesn't work. The next morning, he wakes up and goes to his kitchen to get some water, but discovers that the bottle is empty. There's none coming from the bathroom sink either, and that means he's only got three days until he dies of thirst. Out of desperation, he starts throwing things at the door hoping to break it, but each attempt ends in failure. Nothing is is working, but then he sees the TV and gets a clever idea. He removes it from the wall, and ripping it off its stand, the man pushes the screen through the metal grill. It falls through the air and smashes onto the ground below, but the security guard can't hear the crash. Shoria decides to investigate his room for escape routes, but the only way down is a long drop through the bathroom window. Hungry, he takes a break to eat, but notices a pile of flattened cardboard boxes in the kitchen, and it suddenly gives him a big brain idea. Using some toothpaste, the man writes out a sign for help, listing the building's name and his room number. He takes it to the balcony and tosses it out, but the sign lands on the rooftop of a nearby house. It's a failure, and he runs out of toothpaste, but the man knows this is his best chance for help. Refusing to quit, he tries again, but this time opens up the bandage around his thumb and uses his own blood to write a message. The man throws his new sign through the railing, and this time, it lands on a rooftop with a clothesline. Okay, this guy came up with a great plan, but he wasted way too much time testing other ideas with no good reason to think that they would work. For starters, screaming for help 35 floors high is a legitimately horrible idea. A normal day in Mumbai can reach as high as 90 decibels, which is as loud as a rock concert. In fact, it's so loud from all the honking that in some areas, the police decided they would attach decibel meters to the traffic lights, and if the ambience went over 85, the counter would start over and they would all have to wait longer at the red light. If you're this high up, there's no way on earth somebody's going to hear you, and the city ambience will drown out your voice. Now, if all our plans fail, then it's still worth trying as a last resort, but it's still unlikely you'll be heard before damaging your vocal cords, so I would use my time more strategically and save this idea as a last resort. Instead of panicking, the first thing we should do is gather all loose objects in the apartment into a single area, so we can figure out how to use them in our escape plan. Now, using the cardboard panels to write messages was a great idea, but he wasn't going about it the right way. This man only has a few chances to test the strategy, but if he can't get the messages to land where someone can see them, then it's a completely wasted opportunity. With this in mind, it would have been a lot smarter to have made them more aerodynamic, and the best model we have for this are paper airplanes. What most people don't know, however, is that you can dramatically improve your plane's flight by simply bending the tips of the wings, helping it fly straight and level. This is known as dihedral angling, and it's a basic concept of aerodynamics that will help us get this piece of cardboard far enough to be seen. Another key factor here is the weight of the nose. Paper airplanes with weighted noses often produce a longer flight because it pushes the center of gravity forward, which allows it to gain more speed. With this in mind, I would break off one of the blades from this fan and use it to cut and fold the cardboard, shaping it as close to a glider plane as possible. Since he made this welcome sign here for his girlfriend, we also know that he has tape with him, so I would then take one of the AAA batteries from the air conditioning remote and tape it to the nose of the plane, making sure it's heavy enough to work as a counterbalance for a long flight. With the magic of aerodynamics, even a weak throw should let this cardboard plane fly far enough that someone will see it and come to help. Now, if we try this and discover that the cardboard is too difficult to shape it for flight, we can still use another panel and attach it to these helium balloons. This would let us test its flight in the apartment because we can cut the panel down to make sure it's balanced against the helium before sending it out. The great thing is that even if it plummets to the ground, the attached balloons will make it a lot more likely that someone will see it and come to read the message. This man is completely limiting himself, and if he had stopped to think about how to maximize his own clever ideas, he'd have a much better chance at success. And your chance at success is with Deal Dash. <laughs> I just got 100 bids for free, and so can you. Deal Dash is a pay to participate auction site. Bid on hundreds of goodies every day and get great deals on all kinds of products, and the best part is that they all start at zero dollars. This guy got a PS5, a home speaker, and a popcorn machine for just $143. And shipping is always free on Deal Dash. Now, it's really easy to use. First, you gotta get yourself a bid pack. So once you do, all your bids will appear right here. Now, these will let you enter a auction and bid on items like this Wilson and Miller's watch. All you have to do is tap on the item and place your bids. This makes the price go up by one cent and restarts the auction timer for 10 seconds. So if no one places another bid within 10 seconds, I win. 
And as you can see, someone else placed a bid and now the timer has reset. If you didn't win the auction, don't worry. You can buy it now and get all the credits you've spent at the auction right back. I don't have much on my wish list, so I like to look around just to see what's out there. I can buy gift cards from all kinds of places, buy iPads for less than $40, or get myself a new laptop. These deals are great, so you don't want to miss out. Click the link in the description and use my promo code SUMMARY to get 100 bids for free. Thank you, Deal Dash, for sponsoring this video. That evening, Shoria sees a woman walk out to collect her laundry, and the man screams at her to look at his message, but she doesn't notice anything. That night, Shoria goes to the kitchen to look for something to eat, but hears a strange sound from behind him. Shining his flashlight, he sees a rat and panics, suddenly bumping straight into a wall and knocking himself out. The next morning, he wakes up on the floor and hears the kitchen sink running. Getting up to his feet, he sees water pouring out of the faucet, but the man is too scared of the rat to go in and drink it. Shoria finally musters up the courage, but the water stops coming out, and he has no choice but to stay thirsty. Fixing his glasses with a shoelace, he starts making plans to escape and pushes out a window cage, looking down at the drop, but realizes it would be impossible to climb down. Deciding to write another message in blood, he throws a new sign off the balcony, and this time, it lands near the security guard, but the man doesn't notice it. Upstairs, Shoria starts scavenging for materials so he can create something to call for help. Watching the nearby rooftop, he notices someone walking out and quickly grabs a slingshot he made. Taking aim, he shoots pebbles at the roof tiles to get her attention, but the woman never notices the sign on the ground or the man in the apartment. Shoria here is the unluckiest guy in the world, and his situation will get much worse. That night, he ties his clothes to the railing and makes a help sign before banging a pot on the balcony, but he's running out of time. The next morning, he goes to the toilet to look for more water and can't find a single drop anywhere. It's a hopeless situation, and even though the security guard discovers Shoria's sign, the man can't read and doesn't understand that it's begging him for help. Okay, this man was incredibly lucky. The fact that his messages were actually found is a pretty big deal, but he's still trapped up here with nothing to eat or drink, and it doesn't look like rescue is coming anytime soon. Without fresh water, this guy might survive three more days at most, so that's exactly how long we have to come up with an escape plan. Now, this slingshot is a great idea, and he's doing an amazing job using the tools available to find clever solutions. The only problem is that hearing rocks hit the ground will cause someone to look down instead of up at you. It's difficult to figure out which direction the rock came from, but I guarantee you they wouldn't be looking 35 floors up an abandoned building because nobody expects it to be coming from there. This strategy might be useful as a Hail Mary tactic, but there's actually a better way to get someone's attention. Since the building has probably run out of funding, it's very likely that the construction managers would have been cutting corners to save costs. This even happened in Taiwan, where an apartment complex famously collapsed with over 300 people inside, revealing that it was built so cheaply that it never passed quality control standards to begin with. That's why if it were me, I would check every foot of this place, looking for fake walls of cheap plaster, wooden panels, or drywall. If we're lucky, this might help us break into another apartment or reveal hidden pipes that could have backed up water for emergency drinking. Now if we did find pipes, it just so happens that there's another great use for them and it all has to do with acoustics. A cylinder is perfectly shaped to change the geometry of a sound, helping concentrate it in a specific direction. And that's why if it were me, I would try ripping the water pipes out of the wall and use them to better call for help. It doesn't increase the volume of your voice, but it does make it louder to the person hearing it because the shape allows you to aim the sound waves to a specific target. Target. This is the perfect time to use the strategy because he's already found someone on a rooftop who is above the city's ambience, giving us a much better chance at being heard. Unlike shooting rocks from a slingshot, the sound of your voice is both constant and directional, so she would know exactly where to look and find you calling for help. If we wanted to take this one step further, we could even turn this pipe into a didgeridoo. It sounds crazy, but the truth is, just about any long cylindrical object can be used to oscillate sound this way. You can even see it being demonstrated on the International space station by astronaut Don Petit, who literally used a space vacuum tube to make a didgeridoo for himself. Now, the reason this strategy would be useful is because if we continue screaming for help, we will damage our vocal cords, forcing us to stop. Using the pipe as a didgeridoo fixes this problem because it can produce sound as loud as 100 decibels without using your vocal cords at all. This is loud enough to break through the city ambience below, and you can use it for much longer because it only requires the vibration of your lips to produce noise. In the apartment, the boyfriend sees the woman going out to collect clothes again and shoots at the rooftop to get her attention. But this time, she sees his cardboard message. Picking it up, she looks around for where it might have come from and quickly leaves, walking downstairs to investigate. That's when Shorty 
Claudia sees her appear out of a side street and begins walking towards the apartment building. This is his best chance at escaping and the guy runs to his front door, banging on it to get her attention, but he's exhausted and can barely make a sound. Downstairs, the woman walks into the lobby and asks the guard if this sign was thrown out by a tenant. The man tells her that he's been working here for over two years and is certain no one lives here, but she doesn't believe him. Deciding to take a look around the building, she sneaks into a stairwell, but as she's walking up, the woman hears the sound of shattering glass. She calls out asking if anyone's there, but gets no response and decides to go home with no idea that she's leaving a man to die. Meanwhile, Shoria looks out of the balcony to see the woman walking away. His only hope of survival has disappeared, and that's when he decides to do something extreme. Grabbing a box of matches, he starts a fire and burns the help sign made from his clothes, but it quickly dies out. The man drags his mattress over to the balcony and sets it on fire before backing away, excited that he'll get saved, but realizes he's just made a terrible mistake. The flames are spreading back into the room, and they'll burn him to death if he doesn't do something fast. So he takes off his t-shirt and beats at the flames until they finally go out. Okay, things are getting desperate, but it should go without saying that starting a fire is a terrible idea. This guy seems to keep forgetting that he's 35 stories in the sky, and that means nobody's looking up high enough to see it. He's putting himself at risk of burning to death, and with no water to put the flames out, it's simply not worth the risk. Instead, Shardia should be taking advantage of an infinite resource here, and that's the sun. If he's able to break off a piece of glass, he can spend a few hours each day when the traffic is at its loudest and try to get people's attention with the glare from the glass. Now, we definitely need to keep getting this woman's attention, and since he already saw her walking across the street towards his building, it's clear that she'll be able to hear him if he sends something crashing down to the ground. If it were me, this is the perfect time to use my TV and throw it out the window, using the sound to signal for help. Unfortunately, Shoria here used his TV a long time ago, and that was a huge mistake. We already know there's nobody living in this building, and the agent explained that the security guard is partially deaf. Throwing the TV out as his first signal for help was a very dumb way to waste this resource, and it's much smarter to use that strategy when we know that someone is within earshot of the sound it's going to make. Now, since this is no longer an option for him, we need something else to get the woman's attention, and if we look over here, we can see that he also has several bricks. These won't make nearly as much noise, but the advantage is that he can fit them through the bar and throw them much further. It just so happens that his balcony is facing the main road, so if he can throw the brick past this lower floor, it will land right in front of the building where she's walking. Now, bricks are a last resort, as there's a higher risk of injuring someone, and we definitely need to include writing on them, preferably also in Hindi, or people might think it's the building falling apart. So I would use these window panels here instead. Not only do they fit through the bars, but they also have enough weight to launch them further out, and when they land on the ground, it'll make a sound loud enough for the woman to hear. Using this strategy would have given her enough reason to walk further up the stairs, convinced that someone needs her help. To be fair, searching alone through 35 floors of an abandoned high rise is not a practical solution, but when you get a message written in blood explicitly asking for help, then something is clearly wrong. You might be the only person who can save them, which is why she should have taken this much more seriously and called the police. The next day, Shoria looks around his wrecked apartment and searches for something to eat. The man is so hungry that he begins to hallucinate and sees a forest ranger walk into the room, advising him to eat cockroaches since they're high in protein. It's a great survival strategy. And when Shoria comes back to his senses, he starts looking around the kitchen for food. The man finds an empty cookie wrapper, but as he's shining his flashlight around the room, he spots the rat staring straight at him. That's when the light suddenly stops working, and the animal runs at him, forcing him to hide in the toilet. The next morning, the man carefully checks the kitchen again for the rat, but he's too thirsty to be afraid now and walks in. Grabbing the bottle, he finds there's barely any water left, but Shoria still drinks the last remaining drops. He knows that he needs to rehydrate if he wants any chance of surviving, and deciding to take matters into his own hands, the man starts peeing into a pot. Forcing himself to drink it, he starts to immediately feel sick and pukes it straight into the toilet before collapsing to the floor unconscious. Later, Shoria wakes up to find his first sign of good luck. It's raining heavily, and he runs over to the balcony to drink as much water as he can. Acting quickly, he gathers all the pots and buckets in the apartment so he can fill them with the rain. The man creates a water collector using parts salvaged from the toilet and fills up a massive container. 
Okay, this is risky. It might seem logical to drink rainwater because we're running out of resources and have been stuck here for six days, but there's one huge problem. The truth is, drinking rainwater is actually pretty dangerous because it carries bacteria, parasites, and chemicals that can make you extremely sick. Now, under normal circumstances, this isn't going to kill you, but Shodia here is already very weak. He's barely eaten anything at all, and that makes a simple stomach virus a lot more risky in a situation like this. It might help us survive for a few more days, but then we're going to develop a fever, start puking, and have uncontrollable diarrhea, making us far too sick to escape. That's why the smartest thing to do here is filter this rainwater using a method called solar pasteurization, and luckily, it's a fairly simple process. All he needs is a bag and a shiny surface that can reflect heat, like tin foil or even a metal pot. If we have any of these at our disposal, we can put a bag full of rainwater on some tin foil and place it in direct sunlight. We'll need to let it cook for a while so the temperature is high enough to kill the bacteria, but it's a guaranteed way to harvest clean drinking water from the rain. It might sound too easy to be true, but scientists have proven that temperatures of 150 degrees Fahrenheit is enough to kill E. coli, rotavirus, and hepatitis A, which are all known to be carried in rainwater. Even a metal roof is hot enough to do this, and since Shoria here lives in Mumbai, with temperatures already reaching 108 degrees, it's a great strategy to try. The next problem to deal with is food, and as luck would have it, he actually has two options already in his apartment. Now, this hallucination here is telling him that he should eat the cockroach, but the truth is, this would not be a good choice. Even though they're high in protein, the nutritional value from a single cockroach is pretty small, while rats, on the other hand, provide a lot more nutritional value, and although they can also carry diseases, it's usually spread from their feces instead of the rats themselves. In fact, to some people, rats are considered a delicacy like the Adi tribe in northern India, who have an annual festival where rats are literally the main course of the celebration. Now, escaping the apartment will require a lot of energy, but this is much harder to do if you've waited six full days start looking for food. That's why if it were me, I would have made sure to spend enough time each day hunting rats, pigeons, and even cockroaches to keep myself strong enough for when it's time to break out. Without planning ahead like this, we won't be healthy enough to even consider this an option, because climbing down 35 floors is going to take more energy than we have, and we'll either die trying or lose our chance forever. The next day, he walks into his room and finds a bird inside of the apartment. The man is starving and shoots it with his slingshot, but can't bring himself to eat it. Shoria is a strict vegetarian, but realizing he'll starve to death otherwise, the man cooks it over a spit. With his dinner finished grilling, he puts it on a fan to let it cool down, but as he's returning from the kitchen, the man sees the rat eating his dinner. Furious, he chases it through the apartment and brutally throws the animal against the floor, but that's when he realizes that this creature is the only other living thing in this apartment. Later that night, Shoria has built a makeshift cage for the rat and talks to it as he eats his meal. The man is losing his mind, but soon he'll finally have a chance to escape. That morning, he uses a shard of glass to check the floors below him and considers his options. The man realizes that one of the balconies on the lower units has no grill, so if he cuts through the protective fence on his balcony, he might be able to climb down and escape the building. The only problem is that all he has is a fan blade, a tube light starter, a metal plate, and a cooking pan, so pulling this off is going to be next to impossible. He'll have to climb down five floors to reach the open balcony, and a single mistake will send him falling to his death. But with no better options, Shoria decides to risk it all. The man is determined to survive at any cost, and does everything he can to break the railing. He saws through the metal bars for hours on end and uses fire to weaken the material. Three entire days pass, but the man is no closer to breaking out, and to make matters worse, he's completely out of clean water. Shoria is at his limit, and he drinks the contaminated rain, making him so sick that he can't keep it in. Okay, this has gone too far. He's already been here 10 days and is no closer to getting help, but what he should have been focused on is escaping the room. Now he's sick, dehydrated, and weak, making things much harder for him to act on any kind of escape plan. If we keep postponing the strategy, we're guaranteed to die here, and with this in mind, it's finally time to attempt a breakout. That's why if it were me, I would immediately start planning to escape from this kitchen window. Earlier, when he pushed out the window guard, we could see that the sides were definitely less than 2 meters away from each other. If we place something sturdy across the pillars, it will help catch our fall, giving us an extra layer of safety. It just so happens that we have two wooden doors inside of this apartment, and judging from its height, we can safely assume that they're about two meters tall. Now, in order to pull this off, we're going to need some rope, and luckily, there are three things in the apartment that can help us. The first are clothes and bed sheets. the second is this long extension cord cable, and the third are these shoelaces. Gathering all these resources, I would try to escape by first tying together all my clothes and bed 
sheets, creating a cloth rope for us to climb down. Now we'll need to measure the length of the rope to make sure it's long enough, so before we try anything, the first step is to lower it down to guarantee it reaches the floor below. Once it's long enough, I would try to rip both of these doors off of their hinges, break out the doorknobs, and tie each end of the cloth rope through the boreholes. Then, we lower one door down to carefully place it across the pillars here, while the other door is being used as an anchor across the window frame to hold the rope. This will let us climb down safely with a strong wooden door that can catch our fall if we lose our grip. Once we're one floor below, we can try opening the windows here and break into the apartment to see if the door might be unlocked. There's a good chance it will be because the building hasn't even finished construction, but if it's not, we can use the same strategy to descend floor by floor until we reach the bottom. This can work if we tie the cloth to the door above using something called a high point hitch knot. This type of knot is extremely secure, but can be released easily with one single pull even after heavy loading. Now we'll need a way to make sure we can loosen the knot from one floor down, and that's why I would attach my shoelaces to the end of the bed sheet in order to slip the knot. Once we pull it, the cloth will loosen from the door above, and we can then sit on the concrete pillar while we lower the door down to the next level. The next problem is that we no longer have an anchor, but the good news is that we brought this extension cord with us to help us down the rest of the way. With this in mind, I would switch the ropes using the electrical cord to lower the door down while we take the cloth and tie it to the concrete pillar using the same high point hitch knot. Then, we climb down again and pull the shoelace to slip the knot, freeing the cloth rope for us to keep using all the way to the ground floor. Now, it might sound crazy, but the alternative is much worse, because the only other exit is off this balcony. This would limit you to using only the strength of your fingers, and if one thing goes wrong, you'll fall 35 floors to your death with no failsafe whatsoever. To be fair, both of these options are incredibly risky, but finding ways to minimize that risk will increase your chances of survival, and this wooden door helps us do exactly that. The next morning, the man wakes up in the bathroom to find a cockroach dead on the ground. It's a bad omen, but Shoria refuses to die in this apartment and decides that this is the day he'll escape, no matter what. Walking out into the balcony, he starts kicking at the railing and finally breaks it loose. The bar can be bent back to make a hole large enough to slip his entire body through, and he slowly climbs down the side of the building. Shoria's plan is working, but when he finally makes it four levels below his room, the man realizes there's nothing for him to get a foothold on. The balcony below doesn't have a railing, and the man is going to fall to his death if he isn't careful, but he quickly comes up with a clever plan. Tying his belt to the grill above, he creates a makeshift climbing rope and carefully lowers himself to this railing. The man makes his way over to an unfinished apartment, breaking into the empty room, and when Sharia walks to the front door to escape, it opens up for him. He's finally free and heads over to the elevator, but notices that the power is out. Desperate to leave the building, he runs down the staircase as fast as he can and reaches the ground floor, where he finds the guard messing with his portable TV. Shoria is too exhausted to be angry and leaves the building for the first time in nearly two weeks. After the incident, the girlfriend Nuri walks into the hospital to find the man recovering on one of the beds. Walking into the ward, she sits down next to him and gently wakes him up. The man is relieved to see her and tries to hold her hand, but she pulls away. Nuri got married while he had been trapped in the apartment, and she gives him one final look before walking out of his life. He was too late to stop the marriage, and the man watches her leave, realizing that 11 days alone just saved him from a lifetime of regret. But what do you think? How would you be trapped? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe, and check out the How To Be playlist for more videos like this. Until next time, have a damn good day.